Just a couple years ago, Volvo took an ambitious leap forward into the electric car space with their first ever full electric car, the XC40 Recharge. Now to create that vehicle, Volvo essentially took the gas powered version, plucked out the internal combustion engine, added twin electric motors and a 78 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now today I'm actually out here in Palm Springs, California to drive the next chapter in Volvo's ambitious strategy to become fully electric by the year 2030. This is the first ever 2022 Volvo C40 Recharge. It's built off of the same platform as the XC40 Recharge. However, in order to help it stand out in a sea full of growing crossovers, Volvo has given this car a pretty unique style, especially when you look at the fastback profile. And this is the first Volvo vehicle ever to be introduced in America that will only be purely electric. So it's a really big stepping stone for Volvo. So if you guys have been looking for an all electric, long range, fastback style SUV, how does the brand new 2022 Volvo C40 recharge stack up? Stay tuned to find out. So late last year, I was able to drive the XC40 Recharge, and I was pretty impressed with the overall package that Volvo was offering. It had a few edges that were a little rough. However, this is the company's first ever all electric only vehicle in the US, so I'm really excited to show you guys the styling changes. And because it's built off of the same XC40 Recharge platform, Volvo had a really great place to start. Now, first looking at the design of this vehicle, the first thing you're gonna notice is the exterior color. This is called Fjord Blue. It's a really beautiful shade of blue, especially out here in the desert with the contrast of the light sand all over the vehicle. This color is actually accentuated in the carpet of the vehicle, which I'll show you guys later on in the interior portion. Now, of course, when we walk up to the car, how do you not notice the front end? I mean, you have the signature styling elements here that Volvos are known for. You have their full LED headlights, of course, with the uh, T style Style, the Thor's hammer style LED daytime running light and turn signal. You have LED low and high beams, and you also have LED fog lights down here, along with a unique front end. You don't need a grill with an electric vehicle because it doesn't necessarily need the cooling. So of course the Volvo grill is blocked off. There is actually an open area down here, which I suspect allows for some cooling. Same thing down here. I'm not entirely sure if this vehicle has active grill shutters, but you can see right here at the front and center, you have the newer Volvo logo with the camera uh, right there. Uh, the overall look of this car looks really modern, looks really classy, looks really elegant, and I'm a really big fan of the design. I think Volvo took everything that I liked about the XC40 and made it even more distinctive with the C40. Now, looking at the rest of the profile here, you can see this is a smaller SUV than most of the competition. It rides on the same platform, which means a 106.5 inch long wheelbase, about six to 10 inches shorter than most of the competition. Its overall length is around 174.8 inches long. So this is about a half an inch longer versus the XC40 Recharge. However, this car is about an inch wider and about 1.6 inches lower. And the ground clearance is also lower by about an inch. You have roughly seven inches of ground clearance because again, this is supposed to be more of a sportier looking vehicle. Now, uh, Volvo will only offer the C40 Recharge in a fully loaded trim here in America and Canada. It's the ultimate trim basically. Uh, you have these really attractive looking 20 inch wheels on Pirelli uh, P0 all season tires. They're wrapped in 235-45 R20 inch tires uh, with this kind of two-tone machine with the black inner spoke design. Uh, it's a really nice looking wheel, goes with the body lines really well. You also have very minimal cladding along the side of the vehicle. It certainly looks like a more sport back, fast back style SUV, especially when you look at it from this angle. I think it's a really attractive looking vehicle uh, with the wheel designs and whatnot. Uh, looking at the rest of the uh, side proportions. Let's talk about the side mirrors. You can see they are black painted with the LED turn signal. You also have a black two-tone roof with a glass roof. Uh, the roof itself does not open. Uh, we'll talk about that when we get into the vehicle, but looking at the rest of the profile here, you can see I really like this kind of interesting rear haunch with the character line. This actually has the charge port door over here, which I'll talk about the charging when we go underneath the front of this vehicle. And then looking at the rear, you can see very distinctive look. In fact, this car almost looks like the love child between the old Volvo C30 hatchback and the XC40 uh, regular compact SUV. It's a really interesting design. You have the signature vertical style taillights that Volvos have always had. It's an LED turn signal with an LED reverse light, LED taillight. Volvo is proudly spelled out at the back and then you can see there is a C40 badge over there and then a recharged twin badge over here with the white inscription. That's something that Volvo has been doing for their newer models a lot. And then down at the rear bumper, you can see obviously no visible exhaust tips, but you do have the 
uh, unpainted rear bumper area, which should help with durability. Looking at the cargo area, this is where you're gonna have to make some sacrifices with the cargo space in this car. You get just over 15 cubic feet of space. That's a reduction of about 10 cubic feet versus the XC40. This is where the smaller size is going to hurt Volvo because this doesn't have as much space as something like the Mustang Mach-E, the Volkswagen ID4, the Tesla Model Y. Uh, these seats do fold down and Volvo didn't have the numbers when you fold it down, but I'd probably say it's around 40 cubic feet of space. Um, Underneath here, you can see there is a pretty decent amount of storage here where you can find the uh, a jack. Um, and I believe this car either comes with a fix a flat or a spare. It looks like it has a jack to replace the tire, so it may have that. But overall, uh, the space back here is still usable, but it's not gonna be as big as some of the much larger competition. So the outside of the C40 Recharge certainly looks interesting, but what about the interior? Has Volvo managed to match that on the inside? Now, the first thing I wanna show you guys, here's the key fob for the vehicle. You guys should be pretty familiar with this key. There was a time that Volvo used to wrap the key in the same kind of leather material, but now that this car has gone completely leather free, you can see it just has like a cheaper plastic material, but uh, it's a nice key. You can also use the Volvo uh, Connected Services app where you can uh, log into the vehicle, you can lock and unlock it, you can remote start it, and Volvo says that a phone as a key feature will come at a later date, but right now it's not included. Now opening up the door and looking at this interior, you can see the blue carpet is definitely what's gonna stand out the most. This is actually the same kind of Fjord blue that matches the exterior uh, put into the interior. And Volvo says this is the first interior they've done that's completely leather free. Uh, it's built with sustainable materials and recycled PET bottles. Even the seat material you can see here is a new material that they invented called Nubuck. It's like a Nubuck vinyl with a Microtech suede insert with the contrasting white stitching. The leather material, the fake leather material, definitely feels uh, interesting. It feels modern. It feels soft and really high quality. I also really like the, the faux suede that they use. Uh, the leather on the steering wheel actually isn't even leather. This is, again, a faux leather material made from sustainable materials. The door panel, you can see, uh, has a soft touch injection molded plastic. There's this interesting texture material here in some of the dash and door panel inserts where this is actually a topography of like mountains where this is also illuminated at night. It looks really cool uh, and it's definitely going to be a focal point of the interior along with the blue carpet that you see on the door panels and on the floor. This is a nice padded area over here. Padded over here, you can see there's a metal accented door handle. The Harman Kardon premium stereo is standard on my tester because it's the ultimate trim. It's the only way you can get it. And it sounds pretty good when I was turning up the tunes. Now getting inside, this vehicle has about a seven inch ground clearance. And as you can see, as I get in, there is no start stop button in this vehicle. Instead, it kind of has like a butt sensor, like a Tesla. As soon as I get in, it turns on all the electronics. And then let me shut the door. You can hear the door has a nice solid sounding thunk and it gives you a great impression of quality. Now, to start the vehicle up, again, there is no start stop button. Instead, once you're sitting in here, you have to put your foot on the brake and then put it into drive. Once you put it into drive, that turns everything on. You can hear the Volvo chime that we know uh, from other Volvo products. Um, and everything basically comes on there. I can put it into park now and it'll stay on, but once I move my butt from the seat, it's gonna assume that I'm trying to get out and it'll shut off the vehicle automatically. So that's included, of course, when you go for this vehicle along with the XC40 Recharge. Now, looking at the steering wheel, you can see it's the typical Volvo wheel. You have these controls here for the uh, pilot assist that's come standard. You have your audio controls over here. The steering wheel itself is a manual tilt and telescoping, and it offers a pretty good amount of range. Uh, adjustability. You can see the instrument panel here is a digital 12.3 inch display. This is the newer system we've seen in the XC40. Um, you can sort of customize this, uh, but right now this is where I've had it most of the time with the GPS there. If you push this little button right here on the wheel, you can see it kind of gets rid of the map and gives you kind of like an all black display if you want something more minimalistic. That's really the only way that I could find to adjust this screen. I do wish it offered a little bit more customization. You can see battery uh, charge indicators over there. It only shows you a 61% charge or it only shows you a battery percentage. Uh, and then it shows you your trip computer and your uh, odometer and whatnot. Um, over here along the center of the dash, you can see this is the newer nine inch. It's still a nine inch display. This is powered by Android Automotive. So this is basically built in Google into the car. 
Uh, we'll, ca we'll talk about that in just a moment. This is again, a new system that Volvo is going to be putting in all their vehicles, uh, I believe starting with the 2022 model year. You can see that same material from the door panel is on the dash here with that kind of topography of mountain terrain. And this again, illuminates at night. It has very soft, elegant lighting in this cabin at night, but not quite as cool as what you'll find from BMW, Mercedes, or even Audi. Vol Volvo doesn't do the color changing lights. They think it's a little tacky when I ask them why not. Um, the dashboard you can see has a soft touch injection molded plastic. No real stitching here. Remember this is uh, on the low end of the totem pole for uh, their vehicles. Down here it's somewhat soft touch, although this feels a little bit more hard touch plastic. Uh, you have a big knob over here for your volume control or for your uh, volume. And then you have a tuning button over here, hazard switches over here. And then the glove box, you can see, uh, open that up. It's a bin style. It is illuminated uh, and it's stamped, but not aligned with felt. Down here, you can see there's a wireless phone charging pad, which is nice. You have your uh, gear selector here, not the beautiful crystal shifter that you might find in some of the upper end Volvos, but if I put the vehicle in reverse, just push it forward, you can see there's your uh, backup camera. It also comes with a full 360 camera with automatic rear emergency braking. That's all really nice. It's included with this tech, with this ultimate package. It's the only way you can get it. Kick it back into uh, drive, just pull it back to go to D to drive, push the P to go to park. And then there's also a home button there. You can see uh, when you have, uh, when you wanna go back to the home screen. This is what the home screen looks like. You can see Google Maps is built into the system and it works really well. Um, it also has your Google Assistant where you can uh, say really uh, great prompts or really um, off the cuff prompts and it'll tell you where you wanna go. For example, I can say something like, hey Google, take me to Starbucks. There's a Starbucks 1.7 miles away. Wanna navigate there? No. You can see the voice commands work really well. Uh, I'm actually really impressed. This essentially is Android Automotive, which means you can log into your Google account and you can just have everything pre-uploaded here where you don't even need Android Auto. So if you're an Android user, you're gonna love this. I'm sorry to say, however, if you're an Apple user, Apple CarPlay is still not in this system. However, Volvo did promise that it's going to be coming in an over-the-air update in, in summer of this year. So basically they said mid this year, so we're gonna say June, July. Hopefully they're gonna keep, stay, keep to their word because they've been promising Apple CarPlay for almost a year now. It's been almost a year since uh, I tested the XC40 recharge and it still didn't have it. This still does not have it. However, what they have added is uh, satellite radio that wasn't even on the XC40 recharge, but now you can see it's on here now. You can scan all, your, all of the channels. This looks pretty similar to the old Census Connect where you can just push the star there and you can add it as a favorite. A favorite. You can also pause, rewind the music. That's what it looks like if you just wanna have the album art there. Um, over here, you can see there used to be a way in Census Connect where you could like swipe left and right. Now that's gone. Instead, this is the home screen with the widgets. You can sort of pull this down where you can pull up notifications, kind of like your smartphone. Push that, you can go to your all your different icons. Go to the settings here. This is where you're gonna access a lot of different controls. Um, your drive mode settings, for example, are here, which technically there are no drive modes in this vehicle. Instead, you just have an off-road mode here which I'm not, not entirely sure what it does since this doesn't have an air suspension. It probably just mitigates the traction control. Steering assist, lane keep assist, driver, your one pedal drive is going to be over here if you wanna turn that on and off along with your steering feel. And then if you wanna adjust a couple of other things, you can go into your charge limits, sound, connectivity, controls, your Google accounts. You can all access it from here. It's really straightforward and easy to use. You can also just access the heated seats over here. You can see there's three level heated seats and then three level heated steering wheel as well. No cooled seats in this car. Volvo does not offer it on the C40 or the XC40. And then there's a new feature here where it shows you your range. And there's also a range optimizer here where you can click that. Uh, you can turn on the range optimizer, but it'll limit the climate control functions. And then it shows you kind of a range of the low end and the high end, depending on how you drive and of course your driving style. So that's all very nice. That is new versus the XC40, which didn't even have that feature. So again, I like to see that Volvo is making improvements. This is almost there. It just needs Apple CarPlay for all you Apple users out there. So once they add that, this will be among the best in the system. Although the screen is definitely looking small compared to competitors like the Mach-E, even the Volkswagen 94, the Subaru Solterra, the Hyundai and Kia twins. But if you prefer something a little bit more traditional, this certainly has it. 
There's some piano black plastic trim over here, uh, which actually does a pretty decent job of resisting fingerprint marks. There's a padded armrest over here for the center console. Open this up, you can see it's pretty big. There's actually a trash can uh, right here that's built in. You can even pull this out when you wanna clean or empty out the trash can. So that's all very nice. The seats are really comfortable and supportive, although I did notice the headrest for me, it doesn't, pu it doesn't pull out far enough. So I found myself kind of craning my neck a few times. Try the seats out before you um, buy this car, obviously, but the material does feel nice they hold you in place nicely there it's an a, a 12 way power adjustment on the um driver side and then on the passenger side it is just a eight way power adjustment but it's nice that they at least give that to you and then you have two person memory over here which is nice so overall the cabin gives you a nice commanding view of the road it has most of the tech features that you'd like minus the cooled seats no heads-up display but other than that it offers a good amount of space good visibility premium materials but not super luxury materials but i think a lot of people are going to be pretty happy with what volvo offers here Looking at the back seat of the C40 Recharge, you can see that beautiful blue carpet is carried over back here. And you can also see the sloping roof line is going to take into your space a little bit. In fact, there's about 1.9 inches, I believe, or 1.6 inches reduced headroom. The legroom, however, stays the same as the XC40 at around 36 inches. Uh, so at least that didn't change. Now, for somebody like me, I'm five foot seven. I did have to duck my head a little bit because this does, again, kind of come up uh, and cut the headroom a little bit. But once I get in here and shut the door, you can see the back seat's actually good for legroom for me. There is a hump here because this car is not designed from the ground up to be an electric vehicle, although Volvo only offers it as an electric only car. You can see there are rear seat air vents here. I mean, I can pretty much get comfortable. There's good foot space underneath here. Material quality is practically the same as the front. Soft touch padded area over here, although that topography uh, in the door panel isn't and the front isn't carried over in the back instead you just kind of like have like almost like a mimic to the speaker grill you have two storage pockets back here where it's just like a net pocket you do have heated seats back here three level heated seats a usb charging port uh usb c charging port the vents like i mentioned and then you can see an armrest here folds down gives you two cup holders and then this seat doesn't actually recline instead it just kind of folds flat it's got these power actuated or hydraulic actuated rear head restraints and then you can see above me massive glass roof huge it comes back almost to the back seat lets in a lot of light however there is no shade here it is very darkly tinted but out here in palm springs sunny palm springs i did notice that it gets a little bit too hot so kind of keep that in mind i'm sure the aftermarket will have something there if you guys can't deal with the fact that the sun's always beating down on you but overall the back seat is usable uh, only the headroom gets cut a little bit but for somebody my height or around my height or shorter this will be just fine so now let's talk about what's going on underneath the hood. With any electric car, a lot of you are probably wanting to know, does this vehicle have a frunk? And this is where I'm pretty happy to report. Yes, it does. And while we're under here, let's also talk about the powertrain specs. Now you can see there's a pretty big plastic cover under here. It almost looks like there's nothing there. However, if you pull on this little handle, you can see, open this up, you get just around 0.7 cubic feet of storage space. Now this is not a lot, especially when you look at something like the Mustang Mach-E or a Tesla Model Y, but it is a very nicely finished storage area. So you can see you can put the mobile charger in here. You can put a few other things, maybe some left out, leftover takeout or, or leftover food from a restaurant if you don't want to stink up your car. Uh, and it's also nice that it's completely sealed up and it's nicely finished. You can see it's got a rubberized uh, material here. So it is sealed off from the elements. This is a really nice size frunk, but while we're underneath here, let's talk about the powertrain specs because Volvo is only gonna offer the C40 Recharge with dual electric motors. It's the same powertrain out of the XC40. It makes 402 horsepower and 487 pound-feet of torque. What we basically have are two electric motors that have identical output of around 241 horsepower each. So nearly 500 pound-feet of torque in a vehicle that's this size. So as you guys are probably expecting, performance is going to be pretty potent. It's an electric vehicle, so it only has a one-speed reduction gear transmission along with independent all-wheel drive because you have a front and you have a rear motor. Volvo says you should get to 60 in around 4.5 seconds. We'll test that out, of course, when we get this out on the road. It is slightly quicker by the numbers per Volvo's estimates versus its sibling, the XC40 Recharge. Uh, and this vehicle continues to use the same 78 kilowatt hour battery pack that's lithium ion. 75 kilowatt hour is the usable capacity. Volvo says you get around 226 miles on a full charge, which is about three miles more versus the XC40 recharge. Volvo did increase the range of that vehicle for 2022. As this one sits, it is a pretty heavy vehicle, even though it's on the smaller end. It weighs in at just over 4,800 pounds, which is a lot uh, considering the size of the size of this vehicle. Now I wanna talk about the charging because let's walk over here to the charge port door. 
It's not a power door like you might find on some competitors, but you can see DC fast charging is gonna be standard on this vehicle. You have the standard J1772 plug, and then you have uh, a CCS combo adapter. This vehicle will charge at a maximum of 150 kilowatts, which means you can go from 10 to 80% in about 40 minutes. That's an average time. The Volkswagen ID4 and the Mustang Mach-E is pretty similar, but just keep in mind something like the Korean Twins, a Tesla Model Y, those are gonna charge faster between 250 to 350 kilowatts. So this is good but it's not class leading so I was kind of hoping Volvo would update that if you guys plan to level two charge this vehicle at home which most of you will you can essentially expect this to charge from empty to full in about 10 hours uh, which is the standard rate for an overnight charge on a faster charger all right, so here we are in the new C40, and the first thing I wanna test out really quickly is the zero to 60 time. Volvo says 4.5 seconds. This has the same powertrain as the XC40. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, it's quick. 4.57 seconds. That's with a going slightly uphill. Um, so just like the XC40, I suspect this car is going to be even quicker than Volvo's claim. I'll see if I can retest it again on a more level surface, but that is properly fast. Uh, and it makes this car seriously uh, one of the quickest that you can find in the segment. Um, and <laughs> it definitely has the performance you expect from a modern EV today. So, <laughs> oh Jesus, <laughs> 4.6 seconds. So again, I'm still going slightly uphill there, here. So. I wouldn't be surprised if this car could get closer to the four second mark. Um, Volvo claims that this model is slightly faster versus the XC40, even though they weigh roughly the same, uh, but this is going to be targeted as more of the, I guess, quicker, sportier to drive option because of the styling changes. Now, obviously, it's been a little bit since I drove the XC40, so I'm, a remi I'm reminded again now that I'm in the C40, the, basically the coupe version of this car, just how good it actually is. Um, the platform is still the CMA, it's the Compact Modular Architecture, uh, and the platform itself actually is a nice platform. It's interesting because it wasn't designed from the ground up to be an all electric vehicle, but this is Volvo's first ever vehicle that is solely, purely electric. Um, Volvo has never offered something like this, at least in the US. And, and it really makes you impressed with how far Volvo has come because, you know, for a company that uh, a lot of people, you know, associate with slower, more, I wanna say, not boring, but more grown up friendly vehicles, the, this feels thoroughly modern to me. I like the way this feels. I like the chassis. I like the steering feel. I like the instantaneous power. Anytime your foot just goes down, this car leaps ahead and the, instantaneous thrust is impressive. In fact, the thrust feels faster when I am just driving this vehicle uh, at a cruise and then I put my foot down. If you put your foot down from a stop, it actually feels like there's a slight delay. Volvo actually personally, or they, they tuned out some of the quickness off the line because they wanted it to have a more linear response, which I can understand for drivability, that's probably gonna work. For me, I'm like really used to a fast EV, so that's why I personally like it that way, but most people aren't gonna feel that way. But just going around some of these corners here, we're heading out uh, away from the city, uh, and this is a 4,900 pound vehicle, and that's the beauty about these electric cars is they seriously are, do a great job at hiding their weight, at least most of them do, and this car certainly is no exception, although I, I am surprised considering that it's about 10 inches shorter than something like the Mustang Mach-E, um, the uh, Kia EV6, the Hyundai Ioniq 5. I was expecting this car to be slightly lighter. The Subaru Solterra, which I also just drove, is uh, lighter than this vehicle, despite it being about 10 inches longer overall. Um, but again, you're not gonna be long, lacking or wanting for any kind of performance in this car. It feels like it has plenty of power. Uh, it feels like a premium feeling EV. It doesn't feel uh, like you know an economy hatch that's been adapted to be electric. In fact, it doesn't even have any body uh, or any wheel spin when you floor it. And then when you start chucking it around some corners here, the steering, I have it in the firm setting. Um, and I'm noticing the steering itself doesn't really give me any feel, but the ratio is quick enough. The suspension also feels nice and firm. It doesn't actually give me much in terms of body lean, but what this car does give you is just plenty of instantaneous torque, delicious torque. I mean, almost 500 pound feet of torque, over 400 horsepower. <laughs> it's like, there is no wanting of power. Even as we go up these steep hills here, we're going up into the mountains, this car just eats it up. And 
I wonder, you know, I said when I drove the XC40, I was hoping Volvo would do an even faster version, but I don't necessarily think they need to. I mean, this is plenty of performance. If they ever do offer a Polestar version, uh, it's just going to be insane. Um, but it's really, what I like about this car is just the overall driving feel. It, it feels like a sporty, from the ground up electric car, even though it's not from the ground up, even though Volvo tends to be more toward a softer compliant ride. Now, I also wanna talk about briefly the range. Now, the XC40, when I first drove that, uh, it didn't actually give me a distance to empty or a range guessometer, and that's something that I really was frustrated with. Uh, for the C40, it still doesn't do that in the instrument panel. I started this day out with a 96% charge. However, if you start going into the screen here, you notice there is a range indicator here now. Um, at the most, it showed about 260 miles on a full charge. Right now, it's showing 180. It's kind of giving you a range from 130 to 240 right now, depending, again, on your driving style and the road conditions. There's even like a range optimizer button that I can press. Uh, there's a speed driving style and climate control. In fact, it's showing that my driving style right now has been a little bit dirty and inefficient. So it's showing it in yellow. It's actually, every time I do that, every time I floor it, it adds even more. So <laughs> that's gonna, of course, lower the range. This car is rated at 226 miles. Uh, and I believe in my XC40 recharge video, it actually did get a little bit more than that. So um, remember we have about, uh, a 75 kilowatt hour usable capacity battery. It's about 78 total. So efficiency, efficiency of this car isn't like with the class leaders, the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6 is there. Uh, but in terms of the handling and the overall feel, this feels more comparable to the EV6 and the Mustang Mach-E. Definitely feels sportier than the ID4. Uh, also, it's pretty sporty, just like the Tesla Model Y. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy with the tuning that Volvo has done here. The range is going to be fine for most people. The fast charging of this car, 150 kilowatts, is about the same as the Mach-E and the Volkswagen ID4. Of course, the Korean twins are going to be much faster. The Tesla Model Y is going to be faster. But this is faster versus the Subaru Solterra and probably the BZ4X as well. But here on these curvy roads, I'm going to have to wait until I retest it back home for a week where I can do a more extensive range testing. Um, basically, if you like anything about the XC40 Recharge, you're gonna like this, but it's wrapped in a style that's more standout-ish. Um, the technology in this car has been updated where now we finally have satellite radio, now we finally have a distance to empty meter. It's still lacking Apple CarPlay, which Volvo has promised it's gonna be coming in mid-2022. So hopefully the next couple of months, they, we, they've been saying that for almost a year now that Apple CarPlay, Apple CarPlay was coming. But overall, I'm pretty impressed, especially for the price that you get with this car. Uh, and Volvo just makes it simple to buy. Uh, so I think that uh, if you can get your hands on one of these, it's certainly worth a look. And it's probably one of my favorites out there. And it'll definitely be one of my favorites once they uh, add that over there update for the CarPlay. So as promised, we're gonna do one more zero to 60 test, but going the other direction, which means we are be going, we'll be going downhill. And that's where I wanna see if this car can match the time that Volvo, or do better than the time that Volvo is claiming. We're at 80% charge right now. Oh, God, this thing is still so fast. Oh, wow, 4.07 seconds. Now that is going the other direction, which is a 3% downhill gradient, which means if we average out the 4.5 and the 4.01, we're looking at a 4.2 second zero to 60 sprint right around there. So that is plenty fast. Obviously, obviously it's not as fast as like a Tesla Model Y performance or a Mustang Mach-E GT performance, um, but it is slightly quicker versus the last uh, Kia EV6 GT line and Hyundai Ioniq 5 dual motor that I last tested, making this one of the quickest uh, long range, more affordable uh, electric SUVs out there. So just like its sibling, the XC40 Recharge, after spending the day driving the new C40 Recharge, I'm pretty, pretty pleased to report that this car offers all of the same well-rounded qualities as the XC40, but it's wrapped, obviously, in a much sleeker, more stylish fastback design. This is actually Volvo's first coupified SUV, and it also happens to be the company's first ever electric-only model here in the US. I mean, obviously, this car has some great qualities to it. It's frickin' fast. I got zero to 60 in four and a half seconds, and that was going on a slight uphill gradient. I suspect it's gonna be even closer to four seconds. The interior is comfortable and offers a decent amount of space. And I also like the fact that this is the first Volvo to have an interior that's completely leather-free. So if you guys are looking for a sustainable interior, 
that's friendly to animals. Volvo has you covered, of course, with this uh, interior. I do want to see this car painted in other color options. I like the Fjord blue, but I want to see a lighter interior color option. Uh, the C40, just like the XC40, is on the lower end of the totem pole, so you can't necessarily get this car with all of the automaker's highest end features like the Bowers and Wilkins sound system or the massaging seats or the completely stitched leather dash. This feels a little bit more modern, but also a little bit less luxurious than the bigger and more expensive Volvo models. In terms of the range, I'm going to have to wait until I test this vehicle out for a full week at home where I can do some range testing, but it was showing up around 210 miles on a full charge. I'll have to wait and see what I can get there. I think the DC fast charging of this car is perfectly fine, but just like the XC40, those of you who want more range, who want to be able to DC fast charge faster on longer road trips, may be better off suited with the competition, but just keep in mind that most people, about 90% of electric vehicle owners end up charging at home. Now, what really the biggest compromise with the C40 and the XC40 happens to be in the cargo area. The back seat has enough space, but this has less cargo space than something like a Honda Civic hatchback because of the sloping roof, because it's also a smaller vehicle than even something like the Civic hatchback. But if that's okay for you, you want something that's smaller, sleeker, and very standout-ish, this should very much be at the top of your list. And it's also going to cost you a little bit less than some of the competition. More specifically, I'm referring to the Tesla Model Y because Tesla just increased the price of that car. Volvo is going to keep things simple with this vehicle because they're only going to offer it in one fully loaded trim, the ultimate trim, and that's going to start at $58,750 plus destination. My tester, of course, with, de with destination is just under sixty grand, fifty nine seven forty five. That makes this car, it looks like it's about $5,000 more than the XC40 recharge. However, once you actually factor in the features that the XC40 lacks by going with the ultimate trim to match the equipment of this model, the price difference is actually only $600. So it's kind of a steal, especially if you guys want the sleeker look of this car. It's not that much more expensive. That price is also before the $7,500 federal tax credit. So that price puts it right in line with something like the Kia EV6. If you go for an all-wheel drive GT line with the bigger battery pack, the Kia is about $2,000 less. A Ford Mustang Mach-E is also going to be the same price. A Volkswagen ID4 is going to be cheaper along with the Subaru Solterra most likely and the Toyota BZ4X. But a Tesla Model Y, the cheapest Tesla Model Y is about $65,000 and that doesn't include uh, a $7,500 federal tax credit because Tesla no longer qualifies that. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2022 Volvo C40 Recharge. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.